In this lecture, we will talk about sandwich complexes again. This is in fact, the third lecture in the series, where we are talking about metal atoms or metals and a few ligands, which are sandwiched between two organic pi systems. And these pi systems could be aromatic or could be even anti-aromatic as in the case of cyclobutadiene. Now, uh, in today's lecture, we will also talk about some variations in these sandwich complexes, where the sandwich is not complete as in the case of a half sandwich complex or maybe a bent sandwich complex or even something that is open, where the cyclic pi system is not there, but it is only an acyclic system, but it still sandwiches a metal atom and its components and there are still more complicated and exotic structures such as multiple metal atoms between organic pi systems or even multiple metal atoms which surround a cyclic pi system. So, the type of complexes that are formed by organic ligands are quite large in this category where we classify them as sandwich complexes and today's lecture we will explore some of these variations. To start with, I would like to point out a study that was done by Longwood Higgins and Orgel uh, way back in 1956. If you recollect the first lecture in the series on sandwich complexes, it was in 1956 that the first sandwich complex was identified. Although the, these compounds were several sandwich compounds were known, the correct structure was identified through X-ray and through the intuition by Wilkinson, Woodward and uh, the groups in Germany, which correctly identified the double cone structure or the sandwich structure. So, at this time, um, it was Longwood Higgins and Orgel who studied cyclobutadiene. Cyclobutadiene was already known to be an anti-aromatic system and so, they looked at the nature of a metal complex that would be formed by this cyclobutadiene, which is an anti-aromatic system with a metal compound. They conjectured that a suitable transition metal ion for the formation of a sandwich or, or rather <coughs> a pi complex between cyclobutadiene and a metal would be of the type M x 2 C 4 H 4, where M is nickel either nickel, palladium or platinum and X is actually a univalent ligand. So, they arrived at this structure where they said NiCN2 C4H4 um, uh, for example, could be a stable complex or be an intermediate in the repay synthesis which involved acetylene and nickel dicyanide. So, they uh, predicted before it was actually synthesized that a complex of cyclopyridine could be in fact formed by iron, uh, the iron group metal atoms. So, the synthesis of the four membered rings, uh, the cyclopyridine rings in the coordination sphere of the metal atom uh, was done in a couple of different ways. And we will just look at a few ways because it illustrates some different methods by which these molecules are synthesized. You can see here that nickel literally substitutes for the tin, but there is no oxidation state change on the nickel. You start with nickel dibromide, you start with um, nickel dibromide and that is uh, uh, that's replacing the tin uh, dimethyl compound that is being eliminated in the system. So, and you have a dimeric complex of the nickel which is formed, where you have tetraphenyl cyclobutadiene coordinated to the nickel. Similarly, you could also have a dichlorocyclobutene which reacts with iron dicarbonyl. Iron here, however, is in the zero oxidation state and one iron gets oxidized to iron 2 plus. This iron gets oxidized to 2 plus and it forms F E C L 2 and the cyclobutadiene is coordinated to iron tricarbonyl. So, you can see that a variety of 
reactions are possible. All of them generate this very stable system where cyclobutadiene is coordinated to a metal complex or you know, metal fragment. Now, here is the structure of uh, cyclobutadiene and uh, here it is coordinated to iron tricarbonyl and you have three carbon monoxide molecules which are in fact symmetrically coordinate is or uh, the carbon monoxides are like a piano stool which are holding up the butadiene unit. So, these are in fact called uh, piano stool complexes where the butadiene unit is in fact we can just uh, draw out to show that. So, here is the butadiene part which is the stool of the piano stool and these are the three legs. These are the three legs of the piano stool. So, this is a typical complex that is formed by cyclobutadiene and iron tricarbonyl which is quite stable. There are several methods as I uh, told you. Here is a template method where you would take diphenyl acetylene and in the coordination sphere of iron pentacarbonyl, iron is in the 0 oxidation state here and iron is in the 0 oxidation state here and so no redox reaction is involved. A templated synthesis of the cyclobutadiene however, is achieved in the coordination sphere of iron tricarbonyl. No intermediates were isolated although one can conjecture that um, iron complex would go through an intermediate where uh, ferrocyclopentadiene would be an intermediate and this would collapse as in the case of the nickel system that we talked about. This would collapse to give you the appropriate number of uh, carbon monoxides attached to the iron. You would end up with the iron tricarbonyl complex. So, in fact, there are examples of complexes where ferrules as they are called iron in conjugation with the acetylene is um, has been isolated. Such complexes have been isolated and so this is quite an acceptable intermediate in this reaction. Um, the generation of cyclobutadiene which is an unstable molecule is difficult. So, one has to generate it in the coordination sphere of the metal. That is what we have seen in the last three methods of synthesis. So, here we have a photochemical reaction in which a mole of carbon dioxide is eliminated from this bicyclic molecule. So, here is a mole of a molecule of uh, carbon dioxide which is eliminated and that generates a cyclobutadiene, but now because you are doing it in the coordination sphere of the iron, you end up isolating a stable molecule of cyclobutadiene coordinated to iron tricarbonyl. So, you will notice that uh, these reactions have to be carried out uh, so that the cyclobutadiene is captured by the metal atom before it is too late. Otherwise, it dimerizes and it generates a, bi uh, a molecule which is cyclic and which is just a dimer of the cyclobutadiene. So, this is the molecule that you would isolate if you are not careful enough to provide a stabilizing for, cy for cyclobutadiene which is anti aromatic and it would dimerize rapidly. Now, although cyclobutadiene itself is anti aromatic, it seems to exhibit a reactivity that is a characteristic of aromatic compounds. One of the characteristic uh, uh, reactions of aromatic compounds is the electrophilic aromatic substitution. So, you would remove one of these hydrogens which are here on the ring and replace them with another electrophilic group and that in this case is the acetyl group which is generated by AlCl3 and CH3COCl. So, you end up generating the acetylated version of cyclobutadiene and which is still coordinated to the iron tricarbonyl and the yields in these reactions are quite good indicative of the fact that you can have a smooth electrophilic aromatic substitution of the CH group on the uh, cyclobutadiene 
coordinated to the ion tricarbonyl. So, this is very characteristic of the aromatic behavior of cyclobutadiene which is completely new. It is a changed reactivity all the way from the anti aromatic behavior of cyclobutadiene to the aromatic behavior that we have observed here. Now, other half, half sandwich complexes are also uh, known. Uh, what we have talked about is butadiene because that was the first one which was predicted even before it was synthesized. A very simple reaction of iron pentacarbonyl with uh, cyclopentadiene. If you remember cyclopentadiene is the molecule that has to be generated by cracking dicyclopentadiene and if you uh, heat the two together what you end up with is a uh, iron hydride cyclopentadienyl molecule where two carbon monoxides are still retained in the coordination sphere of the uh, of the iron and you seem to have accomplished an oxidative addition of cyclopentadiene which of course is this molecule so you have two hydrogens here and now you have ended up adding one of those hydrogens to the iron atom and and so you have a hydride which is present on the iron and a cyclopentadienide anion. So, iron has gone from the 0 oxidation state to the plus 2 oxidation state. This is an oxidative addition, but at the same time there has been substitution of the carbon monoxides on the iron which was pentacarbonyl to start with and it has now become a dicarbonyl molecule. And what you have replaced the 3 carbonyls is the cyclopentadienyl unit which in fact will donate 3 into 2 6 electrons. So, this donates 6 electrons in the ionic method and uh, you can uh, do the electron counting to show that this is in fact going to be a stable 18 electron molecule. Although this system is stable what happens is it dimerizes rather rapidly and loses a molecule of uh, dihydrogen that means two hydrogens from uh, the two iron atoms are eliminated as H2 and you end up with a dimer which is a very convenient source of Cp FeCO2 unit when uh, units when you need them. So, uh, here I have shown you what you can do with this uh, dimeric species. You remember the reaction which we have uh, encountered several times in this series which is Mn 2 CO 10 which has got a manganese manganese bond and this manganese manganese bond could be reduced with sodium and mercury. And similarly this, uh, this system also can be reduced with uh, mercury and you would end up with a very reactive iron carb dicarbonyl anion and this very reactive uh, iron dicarbonyl anion it is been called a super nucleophile. So, this is extremely reactive and will react with a variety of electrophiles. Here I have shown you the reaction with R x and this does a simple nucleophilic substitution now on the R group and that leads to the uh, iron R bond. So, this iron R bond is formed and x leaves as x minus and this x minus and N a plus uh, end up with as N a x in the reaction medium. So, you can see that there are some very interesting half sandwich complexes and ions that can be uh, generated by a simple reaction of iron pentacarbonyl with uh, cyclopentadiene uh, molecule which is shown right here. So, let us proceed now. As, um, as I told you earlier, it, would, it is possible to generate the half sandwich complexes in a variety of ways. One of them is to treat a sandwich complex which is not an 18 electron species. So, in, in this case for example, this is not an 18 electron species. If you react it with carbon monoxide at high pressure, then you at high pressure, this is fairly high pressure 200 bar which 200 times the atmospheric pressure. You treat uh, manganocene with carbon monoxide at high temperature and high pressure. What you end up with 
is a molecule called cymantrene, cymantrene and this molecule is a very interesting molecule because um, the substituted variety of this the methyl cymantrene turned out to be a possible additive a possible additive for here is the molecule that I am talking about. This is the methyl cymantrene. You have three CO groups attached to the manganese and you have um, a stable 18 electron system and this turned out to be uh, additive for uh, fuels. So, that you can have smooth burning of the fuel in the internal combustion engine. Remember tetraethyl lead was used for a long time and now it has been completely removed from the market and in between people were looking for alternatives as fuel additives. So, that there will be less knocking in the fuel and one of the molecules was cymantrene and that is this molecule where you have a methyl cyclopentadiene uh, which is coordinated to the manganese and three carbonyl units are there along with the manganese to give you a stable 18 electron system. So, this cymantrene molecule again has got the familiar half sandwich structure where you have one cyclic pi system which is coordinated to the metal and the other side has got uh, ancillary ligands to support this metal atom. Now, here I we cross over into rhodium 1 chemistry and this is just adjustment of the number of electrons rhodium has in its plus 1 oxidation state. This is plus 1 oxidation state 8, uh, 8 electrons in its uh, in its valence shell. This has got 8 valence electrons and so it would require a total of 10 valence electrons and the, those are provided by uh, a cyclopentadienyl anion and 2 carbon monoxides. A simple displacement reaction happens of, uh, of the chloride, but that, that now generates a monomeric complex from the dimeric system that we started out with and it is again a stable 18 electron complex, 18 valence electron complex that we isolate. So, you will notice that this molecule is looking very similar to the CpFeCO2 minus ion and that is exactly isoelectronic with this molecule. Although this is not as good a nucleophile as CpFeCO2 minus, this molecule also behaves like, uh, uh, like a nucleophile and it attacks Rx molecules. So, before we proceed further with uh, cyclopentadienyl systems, I should mention that there are some as you go down the group or as you go to heavier transition metals, uh, you end up with some very interesting reactions. In this reaction which was in fact discovered fairly recently or at least utilized fairly recently, you have a carbonyl species, the uh, analog of the cymantrene. So, the cymantrene had a manganese, here you have rhenium. This molecule surprisingly reacts with hydrogen peroxide and hydrogen peroxide is a fairly good oxidizing agent and it oxidizes the carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide. So, carbon monoxide is converted to carbon dioxide and the hydrogen peroxide not only oxidizes the carbon monoxide, it also oxidizes the rhenium. Rhenium is in the plus 1 oxidation state here and it has oxidized rhenium all the way to plus 7. So, here is a metal atom which is formally in the plus 7 oxidation state and it has got 3 oxo groups which are coordinated presumably through the double bonds to the rhenium metal. So, that makes an oxidation state of 7 and this unit that is ReO3 turns out to be a very stable unit. He, this stable unit has been found in many organometallic molecules. It is doubtful that the rhenium is in fact in the has lost all its d electrons, but nevertheless the formal oxidation state has to be plus 7 on the basis of oxygen which is electronegative and is considered as a O2 minus um, ligand in this case. 
surprisingly very surprisingly you can convert this rhenium trioxide in the presence of carbon monoxide back to the rhenium tricarbonyl species. And it is also possible to make methyl trioxorhenium which means it is Me rhenium with 3 oxygens. So, this incredible molecule is in fact it not only methyl, but any long alkyl chain can be uh, attached. So, this is in fact uh, a strange molecule where you have an inorganic oxide which is attached to an organic molecule. So, this has been called the organic metal oxide. The rhenium turns out to um, perform several catalytic functions and we will look at some of these reactions in a later, uh, later talk. Now, up to now we have looked at cyclobutadiene and cyclopentadiene. Let us look at some arene half sandwich complexes. Arene half sandwich complexes can also be made by a templated synthesis. Here we have reduced chromium trichloride with AlR3. AlR3 is a very powerful reducing agent and it reduces the chromium from plus 3 to 0. And because you have in the reaction medium dimethyl acetylene, the dimethyl acetylene is quickly polymerized or oligomerized I should say to uh, trimerized to give you hexamethyl benzene. So, this would be a convenient way of making hexamethyl benzene. And if you do this in the presence of carbon monoxide, then you end up with a half sandwich complex where CrCO3 has got uh, hexamethyl benzene coordinated on the top. So, all of these molecules have this um, piano stool and they have either two or three legs for this piano stool. So, that you have uh, this familiar framework and that is why they are grouped together as piano stool complexes. Now, the aromatic ring system that is coordinated to the metal can in fact be synthesized in the coordination sphere of the metal atom uh, through a reduction reaction which is accomplished by the organic ligand. In the previous instance, we used an inorganic reducing agent to reduce the chromium to chromium 0. Here in this example, what we are doing is reducing the ruthenium 3, we are going to reduce the ruthenium 3 to a ruthenium 2 species, but we will do this using the aromatic ligand system that is present here. So, two hydrogens are here, which in fact can be used for the reduction reaction and that is what is happening. You lose those two hydrogens as HCl and you end up with an aromatic ring system coordinated to the ruthenium. Notice that here ruthenium is in the plus 2 oxidation state and you will also notice that this is completely an inorganic compound except for the organic aromatic ligand that is present here. It is possible to reduce it in the or rather convert it from the dimeric state to the monomeric state by using a good ligand. So, if you add good L plus uh, by which I mean a strong ligand which will coordinate very effectively to the metal. It could be anything from a phosphine or a pyridine or triethylamine or any ligand you which is suitable for stabilizing the ruthenium and you end up with a piano stool complex where the aromatic ring system is now um, coordinated to the ruthenium. So, here is the ruthenium coordinated to the aromatic ring system and supported by the three legs, two of which are chlorides. So, two of them are chlorides and one of them is the ligand that you have added. This provides a very convenient way of generating the half sandwich complexes because this reaction is conveniently performed in refluxing ethanol. You can just heat ethanol and the uh, philandrine which is this molecule to generate this cyclic aromatic ring system coordinated to the metal. Now, not only is it possible to generate 
it has 6 molecules. In the previous aromatic ring system, you have 6 carbons attached to the uh, metal atom. In this case, you have 7 carbon atoms attached to the metal. You will notice that C 7 H 8 is a cyclic molecule, which is not conjugated to start with. And you have 3 aromatic or 3 non aromatic double bonds, which are capable of coordination to the molybdenum. Molybdenum of course, requires only molybdenum requires only 3 into 2, 6 pi electrons from the cyclohex hexatriene and it has got a saturated carbon center, which is indicated by uh, 2 colored hydrogens. Now, one of them can be removed as H minus along with this pair of electrons. So, this is accomplished very effectively with a tretyl cation. The tretyl cation is a stable cation, which is uh, capable of removing hydrogen as hydride ion. So, if this hydrogen is removed as H minus, you will end up with a cycloheptatrienyl cation. This cation would be pseudo aromatic would be aromatic, because it now has 6 pi electrons and 1 p orbital, which is vacant. So, you have 6 pi electrons in a cyclic system and all the criteria required for making an aromatic pi system is satisfied. Only difference is that you are now attached, you have now attached the pi system to molybdenum atom and this gives you a cycloheptatrienyl molybdenum tricarbonyl. Now, because you have removed this molecule, you have removed the tretyl cation, which has now become triphenylmethane. You have removed triphenylmethane by removing this hydrogen as H minus and pH 3 C plus. You are left with BF 4 minus, which is the counter ion present here. You will notice that in this molecule, all the 7 carbon atoms are almost equally bound to the metal atom. So, that is why we call it a eta 7 complex and all of these are again half sandwich complexes, meaning the system has got one pi system, uh, pi ring system, which is coordinated to the metal. And uh, not only is it possible to expand the ring size from 6 to 7, it is also possible to go down from 4 to 3. Remember, we talked about uh, 4, 5 and 6 being the uh, most popular ring systems, but it is also possible to have 3 and 7. 7 is what we discussed earlier and here we have cyclopropenyl bromide, which now needs to lose Br as Br minus. It needs to lose Br as Br minus to form cyclopropenyl cation, which would be aromatic. And in the coordination sphere of nickel tetracarbonyl, you end up with a dimeric complex where two nickel atoms are interacting with the cyclopropenyl group and the bromide is in fact a bridge. Notice that in this molecule, nickel bromide Ni 2 Br 2 exists in an unusual oxidation state of nickel 1, if you only take this fragment. But you, normally by convention, you consider the cyclopropenyl cation which is coordinated to the nickel as an anionic group. So, this confusion is there for most organic molecules, because by convention we take them as the negatively charged species, which would be anti aromatic. But we know that from the way in which it was made, that in fact, it has been made by generating the cation. Nevertheless, it, the molecule can be treated with a ligand like pyridine and you can generate once again generate now a piano stool, which is only three pointed. It got a three pointed leg and it is also got a three pointed stool to support the uh, support the person sitting on it. So, here is the nickel atom now attached to two pyridine um, ligands and it has got a bromide and a cyclopropenyl group. 
So, if you were to use the anionic method or let us use the neutral method this time, you have 3 electrons from the C 3 P H 3 unit and you have 2 into 2 from the pyridine units. So, that will give you 4 electrons and you also have the bromine which is in the neutral method giving 1 electron. So, nickel has got 10 electrons and so you would form this nice 18 electron system. So, the total works out to be 18 valence electrons. Now, uh, obviously, you do not have a cycle when you have only 2 atoms which are coordinated to the metal, but I just wanted to point out here that the 18 electron rule turns out to be reasonably important. You can have 16 electron complexes, but nevertheless going beyond 18 is more difficult than having complexes which have less valence electrons than 18. So, here I have shown you a platinum complex which looks like a piano stool complex, but only one of the double bonds in the benzene ring is coordinated to the platinum atom. So, platinum is in the 0 oxidation state and you have 2 triphenyl phosphines which are coordinated to it. So, you have a 16 valence electron system, 16 valence, elec valence electron system and you do not go to the 20 valence electron system which would be formed if you were to have a, an, a symmetrically eta 6 coordinated benzene ring. You will also notice that this now has got bond alternation that is a very clear indication of the double and single bond that are isolated and, and are not really conjugated with another one another. So, this the bond which is right next to the double bond which is coordinated is in fact a long bond and then 2 short bonds are there. One is 1.33 angstroms and the other is 1.36 angstrom units. And the bond that is coordinated to the metal is in fact lengthened significantly, which is indicative of the fact that the double bond has been weakened quite a bit by interaction with the platinum. Electron density from the pi molecular orbital has been donated to the metal and the pi star orbital has been populated. As a result, this bond has been weakened significantly. So, it is no longer like a double bond, it is almost like a single bond. So, this brings me to uh, uh, a conclusion of the chapter of the series of half sandwich complexes that I wanted to talk about. I just want to point out that this forms a series where you we, where we talked about mixing and matching the number of electrons required on the for the metal to form 18 valence electron systems. And you could do this by simply replacing the neutral ligands, neutral aromatic or non aromatic pi systems which are present on the metal by carbon monoxide units. But because each carbon monoxide gives 2 electrons, you can replace say a benzene ring with 3 carbon monoxides and that is exactly what we have done here. And similarly, you can have uh, here a cyclooctatetraene, uh, which is giving you 8 valence electrons. We just replace it with 4 and 2. Uh, so, 4 carbon monoxides replace the cyclooctatetraene. And if you replace a cycloheptatrienyl uh, unit, this is a cycloheptatrienyl unit. So, you replace it with 3 carbon monoxides and 1 chlorine. So, that also seems to be an acceptable solution. So, you can just see that you can have a huge variety of metal complexes which are formed. Let us just take a look at the last one which is mentioned here, where I have replaced the cyclopropenyl unit, which will give you 3 electrons. A 3 electron donor among the carbon monoxide type molecules is NO. So, you can simply replace C 3 H 3 with NO. In the neutral method, this is so convenient for us to understand this 
uh, isoelectronic substitution. So, C 3 H 3 is just replaced by a NO molecule. So, a multitude of metal sandwich complexes can be made which are all half sandwich in nature. Now, I want to move on to bent metallocenes. What are bent metallocenes? The metallocene or the sandwich complexes are systems where the metal was in fact symmetrically held in between two flat pi systems. So, there are two flat pi systems and the metal was sandwiched between the two units. And just now, we have looked at a series of systems where the metal is just attached to attached on one side with a pi system and the other side is supported by a variety of other ligands. So, instead of combination instead of supporting it in this fashion with three ligands, one can also think of supporting the metal or bending the sandwich in this fashion. So, that if you have vacant if you have vacant orbitals on the metal atom, these can also coordinate. This happens very readily in the early transition metals. So, early transition metals have in fact um, three orbitals on the metal the d x squared minus y squared, the d x y and d z squared. So, there are three, three different orbitals on the metal which are available for bonding if you have a titanium 4 plus just interacting with two cyclopentadienyl units. So, all of them will be empty. All three orbitals will be empty. So, these orbitals are now available for coordination with the metal atom. So, here I have shown you a, a set of molecules which are capable of interacting with more, more, more ligands just because they have got these empty d orbitals which are available for interaction. First, let us take the tetrakis cyclopentadienyl titanium. So, you have C p 4 T i. So, you take T i C l 4 and treat it with four molecules of uh, cyclopentadienyl anion and you end up with this molecule which if you want to write an 18 electron structure, it would be difficult to do so. But if you bend the uh, cyclopentadienyl unit sufficiently, you can attach the cyclopentadiene <coughs> unit in a sigma fashion. <coughs> you can attach the cyclopentadienyl units in a sigma fashion or a eta 1 fashion in this molecule. Notice that there is nothing which distinguishes the ring A, ring B, the ring C and the ring D other than the hapticity that is associated with them. So, there is a very rapid exchange of A with C or B with C and that leads to some fluxional behavior which we will talk about in a future lecture. But these molecules right now this is a 16 valence electron system. These molecules are quite stable and turn out to be an interesting class of molecules where the cyclopentadienyl ring systems are just bent a little bit backward from the usual orientation. So, this bending back allows for exposure of these orbitals which are there in the x y plane and so allows for interaction with a metal atom with other ligand atoms. So, I have shown you a variety of molecules here, but let us take some specific examples now. Let us take C p 2 T i C l 2 and C p 2 T i C l 2 is titanium 4 plus. This is titanium 4 plus you can reduce it with zinc and um, uh, use carbon monoxide 
in the reaction medium and that gives you TiCO twice. So, here is a molecule which is titanium in the plus 2 oxidation state. Remember there were 3 orbitals that were available on the titanium. So, we can in fact add 6 electrons if it was titanium 4 plus. Now, you have a plus 2 system. So, you end up adding only 2 other ligands. So, that gives you 2 other ligands in the coordination sphere of the titanium and you have a bent sandwich structure. So, um, this is again the bent sandwich structure which we just talked about where the cyclopentadienyl units are coordinated in a eta 1 fashion. This is the way you would end up making it. Now, having talked about bent sandwiches, a species which we will encounter later during catalysis, let us take a look at what would happen if you have a open sandwich. These are molecules which are not appreciated a lot because you do not have a very stable cyclopentadienyl um, uh, unit which is aromatic. So, this cyclopentadienyl unit is aromatic. Whereas, if you have a acyclic version, this is the acyclic version, then it turns out that this is not an aromatic molecule. And so, but still you do have situations where you have cyclopentadienyl units which are coordinated to the metal. And these are stable molecules I have shown for you on the screen a half sandwich complex and we can also have uh, this this type of uh, complex in a in a bis form that means two acyclic cyclopentadienyl units can coordinate to the uh, iron or a ruthenium and those molecules have also been isolated and characterized and uh, we, we let's take a look brief look at why these molecules would be different from the cyclopentadienyl molecules. Uh, if you treat FeCl2 with the cyclopentadienyl anion, you end up isolating uh, a well characterized molecule which is exactly like ferrocene, but it is not as stable as ferrocene because of its open structure. You can also form a half sandwich complex by treating um, a tin substituted molecule. So, here you have MnCO5 Br and SnMe3 reacting together to form SnMe3 Br. So, you end up with a cyclopentadienyl unit, sorry, uh, you end up with an acyclic pentadienyl unit which is coordinated to the manganese. So, this is the acyclic variety of cymantrine. So, these molecules are not as stable as the cyclic variety for two simple reasons. One is the fact that the, uh, the cyclopentadienyl unit has got a covalent bond between carbon atoms 1 and 5. Here, the covalent bond is being replaced by two hydrogens. So, here are the two hydrogens and they are pointed towards one another. So, as a result, there would be repulsion between the two hydrogens. Let us just indicate that repulsion with a different color here. So, this is the repulsion that is going to happen, the place where the repulsion is going to happen between the two hydrogens. To avoid the steric interaction, you would either have to twist the CH2 group or you would have to widen the two ends of the uh, pentadienyl unit and both of these movements of these cyclic pi systems would destroy the metal interacting with the pi bonds. So, what will happen is you will end up weakening the metal pentadienyl bond and it would make the pentadienyl unit more reactive and uh, that is probably one reason why ruthenium complex has been isolated and characterized crystallographically uh, and has been found to be more stable than the iron system itself. It is possible to make pentadienyl complexes, but it is also possible to make 
a bifurcated pi system. Here I have shown you trimethylene methane and the trimethylene methane is formed by reacting a bis allylic system. So, here is a double bond which is uh, here is a chloro atom which is allylic or just adjacent to a double bond. There are two chlorine atoms and this forms a y shaped molecule and if you remove the C L as C L dot then you end up with a bi radical. So, this is a bi radical which can now react with iron and it forms a molecule which is shown here and this is called trimethylene methane because you have three methylene groups. There are three methylene groups which are attached to the central carbon atom. So, these three are in obviously in resonance and are equivalent and you can coordinate it to a iron tricarbonyl molecule. Now, you can also do this by without doing an oxidative addition, you can do a ring opening reaction where the ring opening reaction can happen by the coordination of iron tetracarbonyl unit to the double bond first and then that allows you to have a ring opening reaction and the trimethylene methane tricarbonyl complex is formed. Now, I will show you this complex. Here is the iron tricarbonyl unit coordinated to a trimethylene methane. Now, you will notice that there are four carbons which are uh, marked here. These are the four carbons. All of them are within the bonding distance of the iron atom which is shown here. So, the iron atom which is marked in red is almost equidistant with all the four carbon atoms, but the central carbon atom is slightly above the plane which is formed by the three other carbon atoms uh, which, uh, which are closer to the iron atom. So, three carbon atoms are closer and the central carbon atom is in fact slightly above the plane. And um, recently it has been shown that the bonding nature of these iron, um, uh, this iron tricarbonyl unit to trimethylene methane is quite interesting and it is a very interesting molecule where people have questioned the nature of the bonding between the central carbon and the iron atom. But nevertheless, the bonding distance happens to be uh, slightly more here, it, the distance is slightly more, but it is still within bonding distance. So, uh, this is the molecule which is called an inverted, uh, it is almost like an umbrella. So, the uh, it is like an umbrella which is coordinated to the iron tricarbonyl. So, let us proceed further now. This uh, molecule is got this inverted umbrella or uh, it is also in one sense it is like an umbrella structure and it has got a staggered orientation of the three carbonyl units with respect to the three methylene units. So, it almost it is almost like uh, octahedral geometry around the iron if you consider the three carbons and the of the trimethylene methane and the three carbons of the carbon monoxide. You could also have some exotic sandwich structures where the hetero atom uh, which is the bread part of the sandwich structure that we are talking about. So, the cyclic pi system that makes the bread part can be different. It can be a hetero atom and some of the simple replacements that we can talk about are is converting the C H into N. So, from benzene, from simple benzene, we can move on to pyridine. So, that will give you um, a pyridine complex or you can replace it with a phosphorus. So, this will be phosphobenzene. So, we can have phosphobenzene which is coordinated to a metal atom. Now, it is also possible to replace C H by S, uh, C H minus by S. So, in other words, 
if you can have cyclopentadienyl anion cyclopentadienyl anion you could convert it into thiophene. So, there should also be a good replacement to do. So, these are possible replacements and you can have these molecules um, where you can have substitution appropriate substitution to make sandwich complexes. Thiophene can replace cyclopentadienyl units and here we have chromium which is coordinated to thiophene and it forms a nice half sandwich complex. So, you can imagine how the cyclopentadienyl unit has been replaced by thiophene to form this half sandwich complex. To make a complex with pyridine and uh, which uh, something that would be uh, equivalent of bisbenzene chromium, it has been quite difficult. In fact, it was this was accomplished fairly recently by Elschenbroich and co-workers. What they did was a co-condensation reaction of this um, substituted um, pyridine where the two ortho positions were blocked. So, much so that the nitrogen was not able to interact with the chromium. So, this pi system was now able to interact with the chromium in a pi fashion or in other words it was forced to interact only in this fashion where it forms a sandwich structure. And after the sandwich structure was formed, the SiMe 3 groups were oxidatively removed just by bubbling oxygen into the uh, benzene water mixture of this molecule. It was possible to knock off these SiMe 3 groups and replace them with hydrogen. So, these hydrogens were um, generated from this water molecule were uh, taken from these water molecules and you have this nice sandwich structure where the pyridine is not coordinating with the nitrogen. Otherwise, it was not possible to make complex simple complexes of uh, pyridine which were coordinated in a bisbenzene type fashion. Now, uh, I also told you about making a P 5 um, a phosphobenzene complex. Instead of making a phosphobenzene, even more exotic structure would be to replace all the molecules of all the molecules, all the atoms of benzene which are all CH units. If you can replace all the CH units with a phosphorus, then you would end up with a molecule which would be a phosphobenzene and in here I have shown for you a phosphocyclopentadienyl system. So, here you have eta 5 P 5 unit. So, uh, let us take a look at some of these structures because there are several structures where the C H unit has been replaced by a phosphorus molecule, phosphorus atom. So, here I have uh, shown for you two chromium atoms which are interacting with cyclopentadienyl groups here on one side and 5 phosphorus atoms. So, that is equivalent to C 5 H 5 minus. So, it is possible to make these molecules. So, here is the other molecule which is shown on the screen. Here we have 5 phosphorus atoms. So, we have 5 phosphorus atoms which are substituting for 5 C H units and you can have a isomorphic uh, replacement of a C H group with a phosphorus atom. So, Phosphorus sandwiches are also known. It is also been possible to make multiple metals coordinating to a single pi system. So, here I have a replacement of cyclododecatriene which is a weak ligand coordinating to nickel 0 by cyclooctatetraene. But because cyclooctatetraene needs less number of electrons and you have more electrons in the nickel system, you ended up forming a a sandwich where you have more than one metal coordinated to the pi system. So, multi decker sandwiches have also been um, isolated and characterized, but this one was only isolated in the mass spectrometer, which was the first multi decker complex to be isolated or the first 
multi decker sandwich complex to be characterized. Here it there are 3 nickel at 2 nickel atoms and 3 cyclopentadienyl units and uh, it got a net charge of plus 1. Now, inverse sandwiches are also possible. Here I have a cyclooctatetraene which is like a inverse sandwich synthon because of its tub type uh, structure the 2 double bonds on the cyclooctatetraene then can coordinate to 1 metal atom on one side and the other side coordinates to another metal atom. I have shown for you on the screen a uh, structure where you have a metal atom on one side which is coordinating to uh, two, <coughs> uh, 2 ligands on one side and the 2 double bonds are coordinated to the metal atom which is indicated in the center. So, you have a variety of systems. Here again I have a cyclooctatetraene which is forming a multiple sandwich type structure. You can see that the cyclooctatetraene um, is a great synthon for forming multiple sandwiches and P 5 also turns out to be an uh, interesting system. Here I have shown for you on the screen a P 5 unit which is coordinating on both sides to 2 different metal atoms. So, you can have very interesting structures indeed and let me say that sky is the limit for making sandwich complexes and this is a place which uh, is uh, been actively pursued. Most of the time the 18 electron rule is a great guiding principle for making the right type of a complex and making choosing the right type of a synthesis and very often it is possible to uh, change the pi system according to your convenience so that you achieve the right electronic structure. So, with this we will go on to reactivity of these molecules.